Hi there, I'm Professor E. And I'm DJ Shirts. Welcome to the Robot Program. In this episode, we're going to show you how you can build your own mobile app using the Easy Builder software. So DJ, how do we build our own mobile app? Well, we're going to use JD in this example. And of course, you can use AdventureBot 6 or Roll E. Okay, so any of them. Any of them. So to begin, we're going to load up our Easy Builder software on our computer here. And we'll skip going to Easy Robot School. Now we're going to turn on our robot, lie him down, and connect over Wi Fi. And we're going to load the example project for our robot. And we're going to use the Bear projects. So in this case, we're going to use JD Bear. However, if you're using AdventureBot or Six or Roll E, load their appropriate Bear project. And we're going to select the JD Bear project. For this example. And these bear projects are just a nice clean workspace without any extra controls. You got it. And we're going to choose our servo profile if you have one. And we're going to connect to JD while he's lying down. So stand back. Boom! Hello JD. And of course, let's get him to stand up. There you go. Join the party JD. Okay, so the mobile app that we're going to want to create is going to use a camera and a couple sound effects and to have our own background, etc. All right. And we can add whatever we want to the app. We can. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first add our project, add camera, so that we have a camera added to this project. And we'll choose start. There's Andreas, our video guy. Hello, Andreas. All right. Now we want to add a few sound effects to this project as well. So I'm going to choose add audio. And I'm going to choose the soundboard. EZB. That means any of the sounds that we add to the soundboard EZB will come out of the EZB speaker. And if we choose PC, it'll come out of the computer. So we want to make sure we're choosing, say, EZB. That's right. And if you choose PC but load it on your phone, it'll come out of your phone rather than the, the uh, robot. Okay. So we already have a few sound effects downloaded that we got off the internet. So we're going to select those and load them into our sound board here. I'm just going to select each one. We can push play, we can hear them on the, out of the robot. Ooh. That's neat. <laughs> Very neat. A couple of little, little sounds. robot sounds. You got it. Now, if your sound is too long or if it's a, it's a music you want to cut it, you can push the edit button and you can view the whole sound here. And you can press play and watch the play guide go by. Push stop at the place where you think you want to cut it at, right click, and say delete everything after here. So okay. you can cut from the beginning, the end, the middle, whatever you want to edit out. Yeah, and of course if you accidentally did this and you want to bring it back, you can right click again and you can say undo and it'll bring it back. But we wanted to delete it after here. There we go. We'll choose close. So now this particular sound will only be as long as we made it. All right, so now the next thing we want to do is actually add the mobile interface that will become the app that we're going to put on our phone. Right, so right now we've got the controls that we want to add to the app, but we don't actually have the app itself we want to build. That's right. So on the screen, we don't have a lot of real estate left to build the app. So we're going to choose the File tab here, and now we have the ability to choose different workspaces. We're going to choose the second workspace, which is a nice clean workspace it's to completely begin with. Open. So our old workspace is still there, just now we're on workspace number two. So we'll choose Project, Add Controls, Mobile, and choose the Mobile Interface Builder. There it is. So we can push the gear button on the mobile interface builder, and we can start building our app. We can start adding components and adding buttons, adding things to make it do stuff. So first, let's change the background. Now, if you don't have an image to use, you can choose one of our background templates that we already have here included. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the change button, and I'm going to select an image that I had downloaded from the internet. Ooh, that looks good. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the camera. I'm going to choose the camera button here. And there's the camera. And I can resize it here. So for example, if I want it to be a little bit bigger, I can make it maybe 250 height and maybe 370 width. And you can place there it wherever you want on the screen. Yep. And I can add here a connection button so we can access the connection controls. And we can also add buttons for forward, left, right, etc. But if we add one of these buttons, for example, there's one right here and it's black, you can see it over top of the color, um, this would just be a single button. If you push it, the robot will start moving that direction. 
we're not going to actually use one of these. We're going to right click on it and choose delete. Instead, we are going to scroll the way down and add a joystick pad. Okay, that way we can use it as a joystick pad like you're familiar with video games. By default, when you add the joystick pad, it's going to move full speed when you move any direction. There's a checkbox here to allow you to have variable speed control. That means the further you move the joystick pad for forward, the quicker the robot will start moving. Same with left, same with right. And then you also have the ability to disable. And there's question boxes you can put your cursor over to read additional information about each one of these. All right, so now we want to add some buttons that are going to trigger the sound effects that we added to our robot. So we need three different buttons. So we can add different type, types of buttons. We can add a regular button like this, which we'll add one of, and we'll type in sound number one. And then we are going to click on edit script. And Blockly is going to load up. And we'll choose our audio editor. And we'll say play audio. And we can choose the sound that we want. So we want the first one here, which is ES alarm robotic sound. We'll choose save. Now those appear in Blockly because we added them to our workspace already. You got it. And now we can duplicate, copy, and paste that button again. And this time we'll make it sound number two. And we'll click on the edit script for sound number two. And we'll change that one to robot chime. And then again, we'll copy this one and paste it. We'll put it next to this one and we'll call this sound number three, of course. And we'll edit the script for this, and we'll change this one to the last sound effects, which is robot sci-fi sound. Now, I mentioned there's different style of buttons as well. We're going to add a button that's going to trigger an animation for the robot. Ooh. So we're going to choose the image button here. Now, image button, by default, is going to have a generic image. We can add our own image, which we can download from the internet, by clicking on the change button. And we can select our file, but we're going to choose cancel. Instead, we're going to choose the library button, where we can access a bunch of images that the software already includes. So we can use a little dancing guy, we can use any of these little buttons. So because of the background color is already being black, let's use this little green button here. And there it is. Now you can see our dimensions have that button a little bit warped. Yeah. So we can change these dimensions here, make them both 52 to make it a complete circle. Looks good. There we go. Now the code that we want to run when that button is pushed, is under Edit Script. So we're in Blockly again. We're back in Blockly. I'm going to choose the Movement tab here, and I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to choose an Auto Position. Now, if you have Adventure Bot, you're not going to have an Auto Position, so you're not going to be able to do this. But for any of the other robots, they're going to have an Auto Position. You can choose it, and you can select a particular animation you want to activate when you push that button. So for GD, I'm going to add the Wave. Good classic. Yeah. I'll choose Save. And now, I'll choose Save again. And of course, we can push our buttons. And we can use our joystick to test this out. It's cool. walking. There he goes. It gets faster the further you go. That's right. We can go just a little tiny bit, make him walk really slow. You see that? Yeah. And we can finally push our last button and make him wave. Perfect. So we can see the camera is working and everything's running. So now we want to save this mobile app we just created to our phone. So we're going to choose File, and we're going to go back to our original desktop here. We're going to disconnect from our robot. And we can turn our robot off to make sure that we're completely disconnected. Now reconnect to your network connection. So visit your network connection and reconnect back to your connection. Now that you're connected to the internet, we can actually save this project to the App Store. So choose Save and give your robot a file name. In this case, we're going to call it the Robot Program JD. And it's like a tag that this app applies to. So humanoid looks good, complete looks good, and then the type of controller, well, we were using a V4. And what's a default control? Well, if you put your cursor over top of any of these question boxes, it's going to tell you what that means. The default control is the control that's going to load on your mobile device when you load the app. Well, we know it wants to be the mobile interface, because that's what we made it. Okay. We can make it the camera, we can make it any of these things, and it'll load it up as the first thing. So we want the mobile interface to be the first one. Now we want to give it a description. We can type in, this is the robot program JD. Have fun. Smiley face. We can choose over here. Is it public? No, it's not. We don't want to share this app. Not yet. Not yet. 
prompt for a servo profile. Yeah, JD needs a servo profile, so we'll prompt for that. We could change the image here. So let's change title image, and let's use our picture of the Oh, Earth. it looks good. Now we'll choose a save button again, and it's going to ask me for change log details. Every time you save an app to the App Store, it'll ask you for change log details. That's because you can go back in time and load an app that you have saved at any point. So I type in, this is my first save, and I'll push save. And there, now it's saved to the App Store. Okay. So we can load up my phone and load up the Easy Builder app. And I'm going to click on My Easy Cloud Apps. And it's going to load from the App Store. And we'll scroll down and find the robot program JD. There it is right there. There's our image. There it is. We'll select it and we'll say download and install. So now it's going to install it on my device. And I can choose the remote control button. And there's the app that we just had created. There it is. And so does it work the same way you expected? Yeah. So let's turn on JD. And here I will connect to JD or the network. And I'll connect to JD's Wi Fi network. And go back to my app. Now watch out, he's going to initialize when I push connect. And we're not going to load a server profile for this guy right now. And we're going to choose remote control. And there's our app. So we don't have a button to get him to stand up. So we'll stand him up, give him a little hand on his own here. And now we can push our joystick to make him walk. We can push sound number one. Sound number two. And of course our wave. <laughs> That's great. So there you have it. So we made our own app. And from our app, we can also access RoboScratch, and we can access Blockly, and we can even go into the Controls tab here, where we can access all the individual controls. Awesome. So that's how you make your own app. So you can get creative, and you can add your own buttons, your own sound effects, your own everything. Get creative on the go. In this episode, we showed you how to create your own mobile app for controlling your robot. You can use any of the robots for this activity. Load the Easy Builder software and open the Bear project for your robot. Power on the fully charged robot and connect to the EZB using Wi Fi. Click the blue Connect button to initialize. The Bear project has minimal controls in the workspace, allowing you to add the controls that you want to incorporate within the app. For example, you could add and edit sound effects using the soundboard control. Saving information in this workspace will allow it to be available to the mobile app interface. To create the app, click on the second workspace to start with a blank canvas. From the project controls, add the mobile interface builder. Click the gear icon to access the customization and configuration settings. Here you can add background images, a camera preview, buttons, and even movement control joysticks. Hover over the blue question marks to learn more about a specific aspect. The function buttons and icons can be edited by clicking Edit Script. Use the Blockly Editor to add actions, movements, and even play audio. When your mobile interface is complete, disconnect from the robot and reconnect to the internet. Save your project to the EasyCloud database. Change the default control to Mobile Interface. This will cause the interface you designed to load when the project is opened on your device. On your mobile device, open the EasyBuilder software and log in. Click on My Easy Cloud Apps and scroll down to find your newly saved project. Choose Download and Install to open your own mobile interface within the Easy Builder app. Click the Remote Control button to access and test your interface. Connect to the robot and enjoy what you've created. Thanks for watching this episode, and we'll see you next time. Which control should be added to build an app? When saving, which default control mode should be selected? Which icon provides additional feature information? Find the answers at theroboprogram.com.